President Barack Obama is back in Chicago tonight making his final presidential speech in the city where his political career got its start. He's expected to tell Americans not to lose faith in their future no matter what they think about their next president. Joining us now is Jason Russell, contributing editor with the Washington Examiner. Welcome, Jason. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. The White House is saying tonight's speech will not be a victory lap, although I think we're going to have to make sure to double check that. Uh, the call to motivate people is what's going to be on his mind. Is this motivation going to be anti-Trump, do you think? That's a great question. I think, uh, you know, certainly Obama's going to look back at his eight years. And he, you know, even though it's not a victory lap, he is going to defend a lot of his accomplishments, especially uh, when it comes to some of his immigration executive actions, especially when it comes to Obamacare, for sure. Uh, and while those won't be a direct attack on, on President-elect Trump, it, it will be kind of a, a subtext of, you know, it's important to keep these things in place in Obama's view. This is a very important speech. It goes back to 1796 when George Washington actually hand wrote out 32 pages saying, friends and citizens, farewell. Um, how important is it to Democrats tonight to hear this speech and, and others who are really unhappy with the election results? I think it's, it's really important for President Obama to kind of set the stage for the, the next generation of Democratic leaders. Uh, because you know, no matter what he does in the next four to eight years, he can't run for president again. They need to have a new uh, generation of leadership if they want to have another big impact on the federal level. They can't. They need a new Barack Obama, basically. Right. So it's important for him to kind of step aside and, and, and show that he's going to support the next generation. I think that he's actually said that one of the things that he really does want to do is grow that next generation of leadership. He'll be staying here in Washington. He has a house not very far from our studio. Um, and it will be interesting to see how he does that. Do you have any insights to the, on that? Exactly. It'll, well, you know, if he's going to do it, he's going to have to do it behind the scenes. You know, because if if he is too public about it, then he risks kind of sucking the air out of the you know, political debate, and he'll it'll be a big distraction for anyone who's trying to. Uh, you know, rise up in their own right. So he really has to do it behind the scenes and groom people behind the scenes without attracting too much attention. I wonder if he'll mention all the perks that are going. This is his last trip on Air Force One. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if there was a couple jokes about that. <laughs> Obviously, you know, it's, it's nice to live in the White House. You get a lot of nice stuff there. You get your own chef and things like that. A very nice garden, uh, a great view or so I'm, <laughs> right, right here. So uh, certainly, I, you know, if I were the president, I would I'd be I would saying the same thing. Yeah. I would be too. I guess he gets to get on that airplane one more more time as he flies away to some warm destination. I think that's what he told Oprah. <laughs> See ya is what he's going to be saying. All right. Thank you so much. Jason Russell, contributing editor with The Washington Examiner. Thank you.